Hey everybody, I'm Tim Parati. I am the Chief Investment Strategist at WealthVest. I want to take the next five minutes to walk through four long-term factors that drove what economists call the great moderation or the disinflationary forces that drove the 40-year bull market in bonds and equities and how these drivers have abruptly come to an end. Those drivers are demographics. Think of the baby boom and the great retirement that we now talk about globalization and that has now turned to deglobalization and here I'm really talking about the integration of China into the global economy and the end of that. Uh, the long period of global uh, of, of growing legal immigration and how that has turned into declining legal immigration and the last factor is falling labor productivity. Now why does this all matter? Because the fact is is that it really is different this time. As financial advisors and as fiduciaries we have to evolve. Going back to what you've always done and sticking to your discipline of what's worked or sticking to your knitting, as people like to say, it's just not going to work. The end of disinflation is not cyclical. It is secular. And a higher inflation world is not bullish for bonds. It is not bullish for equities. And it's certainly not a formula where a straight 60-40 allocation is going to make the most sense. I want to be clear about something here. This is not my theory that I've come up with. These are concepts that the biggest macro hedge funds like Bridgewater and the biggest asset allocators like BlackRock are talking about. And they're talking and they are incorporating these ideas into their client assets, into their allocations right now. Uh, these are not just risk factors. These are part of an inexorable new reality. Uh, so let's get right into what these drivers are. So a very simple chart. This chart represents uh, labor force, which is going like this, and this chart represents inflation, which is going like this. This is uh, inflation, which has been falling now, we all know, for 40 years, and this is labor, which is probably less understood. So this line represents inflation and the worker share of total income. Right? Worker income has been losing out to capital, to profitability for these 40 years and it is now starting to reverse. So what drove this line? Think of the baby boomers. Uh, think of that peak being in 1957. So in 1980, that baby boomer is uh, 2022. That baby boomer is 23 years old. Well, now that baby boomer is retiring. He is 65 years old, and we know that we have low fertility rates. So we know we just don't have enough workers. We know that our total workforce is not growing anymore. So what else has driven this higher? Well, what the former global chief economist at Morgan Stanley refers to as the single most important tailwind to the global economy for the last 40 years, that is the integration of hundreds of millions of Chinese workers. So think about that. The US and, the, and Europe, Companies have long had the ability to offshore and outsource labor at a small fraction of the cost of domestic workers. That is now coming to an end. And as China has its own really steep demographic cliff, it is now forcing, and, and don't forget the geopolitical tensions that are really rapidly coming to the fore, companies are now figuring out how to make supply chains that are not just the cheapest, but the safest and the most reliable. That's what deglobalization is right now. So we have the end of the baby boom tailwind, we have the end of the Chinese integration, uh, the globalization tailwind, and let's add on to this declining immigration. Immigration has fallen off a cliff starting in 2017. I mentioned BlackRock. Their CEO, Larry, F Larry Fink, talks about this all the time. We are missing 2.1 million workers, and what he's really referring to is if you just straight line the trend pre-2017, we would have 2 million more workers via legal immigration in this country. And in the political world that we live in right now, the odds of reversing that trend are, are really probably slim to none. Lastly, high levels of productivity. So from 1980 until uh, 2010, productivity was about 2.5%. Well, now it has been about half of that. And since the end of uh, the pandemic, productivity has fallen off a cliff. So. Um, we don't know why productivity has fallen off a cliff, but it has. Uh, so you get the idea. We are in a new world where these massive tailwinds are behind us. And now we have to incorporate into our thinking that we cannot simply assume that past is prologue. The next decade is likely to see slower growth and higher inflation. Uh, and the way you think about your exposure and your risk for your clients and the principal protection for your clients has got to change. Thanks for viewing this.